Welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Beast, where we tackle the ins and outs of real estate investing. I'm your host, Michel Kmiotek, and I'm here to help you become the alpha in the world of property investment. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just getting started, this show is your go-to resource for tips, strategies, and insights to build your real estate empire. Today's episode is all about one of the most critical aspects of real estate investing, tenants. That's right, folks, the people who live in and take care of your investment properties. Good tenant relationships can make or break your real estate business, and we're here to make sure you're on the path to success. We'll dive deep into how to find great tenants, maintain positive relationships, and handle the inevitable changes that come with property management. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's take a step back and look at the big picture. Why are tenants so important in real estate investing? Well, for starters, they provide the steady income that makes your investment profitable. Without tenants, your property is just a vacant building draining your resources. On the flip side, bad tenants can cause a lot of headaches and of course, financial losses. So it's crucial to get this part of your investment strategy right. In this episode, we're going to cover the following. The importance of tenant screening, the tips and tricks for maintaining good tenant relationships, dealing with difficult tenants, and legal considerations every landlord should know. So whether you're managing a single rental property or a large portfolio, the insights we share today will help you maximize your returns and minimize your stress. Are you ready to master the tenant tango? Right, let's get started. Let's dive into the first topic of the day. One of the biggest misconceptions new investors have is viewing tenants merely as a source of income. This mindset can set you up for disappointment and frustration. The reality is that tenants are human beings with their own lives, dreams, hopes, and aspirations. They're not just paying rent, they're living out their lives in your property. One critical point to understand is that you won't be sharing a lifetime with your tenants. Expect tenants to move in and out regularly, especially in residential properties. Life happens. Single people meet friends, find love, grow families, and as life progresses, tenants move out. The first mistake many new investors make is believing that tenants will rent their property for 10 or maybe 15 years, leading to easy, consistent income. This is often far from reality. The truth is, most tenants move out within three years. That's the norm. Sure, there's a small percentage who stay for five years or even a decade, But these are usually exceptional cases. Often long-term tenants remain because the rent is significantly below market average and moving to a new property would basically involve higher rent, leaving them with less money in their pockets. So understanding this tenant turnover reality is crucial for your investment strategy. It means you need to be prepared for regular tenant turnover, which includes budgeting for vacancy periods and the cost associated with finding new tenants. This might involve marketing your property, conducting background checks, and possibly even minor repairs or updates to keep your property attractive for prospective tenants. Moreover, having a solid tenant turnover plan can help you manage your expectations and maintain a positive outlook on your investment. Remember, tenant turnover is not a failure on your part as a landlord it's a natural part of the rental business. By embracing this reality, you can focus on creating a great living experience for your tenants, which can in turn lead to better tenant relationships and potentially longer stays. Now we've discussed the reality of tenant turnover. Let's move on to our next critical topic, minimizing vacancies. As an investor, nothing eats into your profits like an empty property. So. How do you keep those units filled? The answer is simple, experience. Specifically, experience with tenant screening and selection. Let me share a story that highlights this perfectly. One of my agents recently listed a rental property with a rent set higher than the market average for that area. 
After a few showings, the owner was a bit frustrated and asked her why she hadn't brought more potential renters. He was expecting at least 10 showings per week, if not even 20. Her reply was, of course, spot on. She said, sir, I understand your position and I could definitely bump up the number of showings. However, I screened the potential tenants before ever organizing a showing. I asked them about their family composition, employment status, and household income. Once I'm assured that they could be potential tenants, I offer them an opportunity to come and see your property. I'm bringing you quality, not quantity. This approach is essential. By pre-screening tenants, she was able to avoid unnecessary showings and focus on serious prospects. Often investors meet potential renters who try to impress a sense of urgency or maybe even helplessness. They might say things like, we really need a place to stay, won't you please make an exception, or we promise to pay regularly. Now, experienced professionals know these phrases can indicate underlying issues. Instead of making decisions based on pity, we focus on the facts. A potential tenant's paperwork needs to be solid. This means verifying employment, checking credit scores, and of course, confirming previous rental history if possible. But it doesn't stop there. The in-person showing is also an opportunity to assess their demeanor. Are they on time for the showing? Are they well-dressed? Or do they look like they just rolled out of bed? Or did their story even change from the last time we spoke on the phone? These details matter and come with experience. You can't learn this from a book or an investor course. It takes at least 50 different tenant screenings before you start developing a gut feeling about your prospective tenants. So remember, quality over quantity is key. By honing your screening process and consequently also trusting your instincts uh, will develop through more experience you can significantly reduce vacancies and ensure you have reliable long-term tenants in your properties. Now that you've found a suitable tenant, the next crucial step is creating a relationship of respect and boundaries. This balance can make all the difference in your success as a landlord. Too often, newcomers to the investment game have a tendency to be either too involved or not involved enough. So let's break it down. For those who are too involved, this likely stems from a fear of your tenant moving out sooner than expected. Maybe you have a high monthly mortgage to pay and losing out on rent would severely hurt you financially. Or perhaps you're just a nice person who wants to help your tenant feel comfortable. Whenever there's an issue, you jump out of your seat and rush over to fix it. This is a common mistake for those who have never ran a business before and aren't used to a leadership role. Here's the thing, you aren't married to your tenant. This is a semi-business relationship where distance is required. You don't need to answer their calls immediately and they don't need your cell phone number. An email will often do. Don't fix issues as they arise straight away unless they're extremely urgent. And urgent issues are typically limited to things like possible water damage or fire damage. Other issues such as leaky faucets, faulty doors, broken ovens, mold, or no Wi-Fi aren't life-threatening and can be dealt with in due time by professionals. By keeping distance and setting boundaries, you ensure that being an investor doesn't become a daily hands-on activity. Certain tenants learn very quickly that once you've helped them fast, this gives them the right and power to ask for whatever they want whenever they want it. You don't want to be called by your tenants to open the door for an Amazon delivery while they're away on holiday, do you? So that's one end of the spectrum. Now, for those of you who never move your butts at all, there's a different issue that might arise. Being too laid back and never being aware of issues in your rental could lead to excessive deterioration of the premises. Small issues could grow into larger problems if not handled in due time. Furthermore, the more you neglect these issues, the more damaging proof a renter can accumulate to sue you in the long run. So what's the sweet spot here? It's about creating a relationship of mutual respect and clear boundaries. Respond to issues in a timely manner, but prioritize based on urgency. Communicate clearly about what constitutes an emergency and what doesn't. Set up a reliable system 
for tenants to report issues such as an email address or an online portal and make sure to follow up within a reasonable time frame. Remember, your goal is to be professional, not personal. You're providing a service and maintaining professional boundaries helps ensure that the relationship remains respectful and functional. By striking this balance, you'll make your life as an investor much easier and more sustainable in the long run. Now that we've discussed creating respectful boundaries with your tenants, let's move on to another critical aspect of managing rental properties, rent collection. As with many things in life, prevention is better than cure. Ensuring you have a solid rent collection process in place before your tenants move in can save you a lot of headaches down the road. First and foremost, before a tenant ever moves in, make sure that the first month's rent and the security deposit have been received in full. This is non-negotiable. We never ever hand over keys before the owner has received all the funds and the agency has been paid. No payment, no keys. It's that simple. In addition, it's essential to make the payment procedure clear to your tenants from the very beginning. This includes specifying when the rent is due, how much is due, and to what account the payment should be made. These are standard practices, but it's important to remember that tenants often have a lot on their minds during a move and can be forgetful, especially in the first couple of months. Your payment system might differ from their previous landlords, so you might need to remind them to pay rent on time initially. Here's an example from one of our own experiences. For a client, we rented out a two bedroom apartment to a young couple in their 20s, I think they were, and the mother was also going to live there. Now, rent came in as expected for the first and second month, but then payments started to be delayed. The tenants had to be reminded countless times over the phone, by email, and finally in writing through mail, uh, outlining their rights, but also the owner's rights to evict. While the rent did eventually come in, it was never on time, which created frustration for the owner. The situation escalated to the point where the owner went to the tenants to have a chat, a friendly chat, but it was necessary to remind them what the implications were of not paying the rent. The renters seemed to understand the gravity of the situation. Now, a few days later, the mother met up with the owner and apologized for the delayed payments, handing over <laughs> an envelope with cash to cover the last month's rent. Her only request was not to tell her son-in-law that she paid it. Okay, strange request, but thanks for the rent, right? A month later, the daughter had called to explain that her relationship had gone from good to terrible and that her now ex-boyfriend had developed a gambling addiction. They had to hide money from him and did their best to scrape together the rent in the past. They were basically too ashamed to tell the owners the truth. Once the couple separated and the boyfriend moved out, rent came in on time. And these tenants have been living in the unit for the past nine months without any more issues with payments. The landlords were relieved that their initial choice to accept these tenants uh, was the right one, even though a bad apple had to be dealt with. This story highlights that being an investor isn't easy and you're not always dealing with clear-cut situations. Being an investor is like running a small business. Yet most of us never aspire to run a business, we just want to make extra cash by investing in real estate. However, the reality is that you need to approach your investment with the same seriousness and diligence as you would a business. Establishing clear rent collection procedures, setting expectations, and being prepared to handle unexpected situations are all part of the job. By doing so, you can minimize potential issues and ensure a smoother, more profitable experience. As we wrap up today's episode, let's recap some of the key points we've discussed. First, remember that tenants are more than just a source of income. They are people with dreams and aspirations, and understanding this can help you foster better relationships and manage your expectations. We also talked about the importance of experience in minimizing vacancies through effective tenant screening and selection. Quality over quantity is key and developing a gut feeling about tenants comes with experience. 
Then we explore the importance of creating a relationship of respect and boundaries. And it's crucial to strike a balance between being too involved and too laid back. Set clear boundaries, communicate effectively and assure that urgent issues are prioritized while routine ones are handled in due time. Finally, we discussed rent collection. Prevention is indeed better than cure. Make sure the first month's rent and security deposits are received before handing over the keys and clearly communicate the payment procedures. Stay vigilant but fair and be prepared to handle unexpected situations with professionalism. Being a real estate investor is much like running a small business. It requires diligence, clear communication and the ability to handle challenges as they arise. But with the right strategies in place, you can minimize stress and maximize your investment's potential. Now, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Real Estate Beast. I hope you found these insights helpful and are ready to apply them to your own investment journey. If you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I would love to handle all the topics that you come up with in the next episodes. Feel free to reach out. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, leave a review and share it with fellow real estate enthusiasts. Your support helps me continue to bring you valuable content each week. Until next time, happy investing.